All right. Uh, my name is uh, Trond Nerva Skog. Um, I'm the CTO of Beck Consulting. And uh, for the last few years, I've been working in the public sector for Tax Norway and currently for NAV, which is the Norwegian Welfare Department. Um, why I'm qualified to talk about this, uh, I can give you guys uh, ward number three, which is uh, uh, because Ward Cunningham, the, the programming genius of the Agile Manifesto Signatures, uh, he pair programmed with uh, Astak Helsey. That's award number two. And I pair programmed with uh, Astak Helsey. So uh, I'll give you the next one. So please come up and pair program with me. That will give you award number three. Okay, uh, the title for this uh, talk was inspired by my colleague, uh, Jöran Lillesan. Uh, eight years ago on the Agile conference in, uh, in Norway, he had a, a talk called Dere Eid Smidi. Uh, and he talked about uh, how people are uh, doing uh, the stand-ups, uh, the iterations, uh, all the other uh, ceremonies of the, of the agile uh, mythologies. And that doesn't make you agile. You have to actually do some more, and you have to do, do it for real. And that's a really good talk. Uh, I tried to, uh, to do uh, the next level in this talk uh, to take a broader view of uh, Agile. So uh, we're going to do it like this. Uh, 500 years ago, Martin Luther uh, uh, posted his 95 Thesis and changed the way uh, the church uh, uh, was, wor uh, was working. Uh, the Catholic Church uh, did a lot of uh, paying for salvation or the bigotry, so he said we need to do it differently, and it changed the way religion works, and that has has uh, changed the way uh, uh, we actually do religion in Norway uh, and the Western Europe today. And we need to think the same way for Agile. But this uh, uh, manifesto, it's uh, 16 years old. Uh, it's wonderful. It's uh, got all these good things. And it's, uh, it's uh, uh, speaking to me uh, today, as it did 16 years ago. Uh, and it has some wonderful principles, uh, which are also uh, valid today. Like, uh, architecture should be grown bottom-up from the teams owning the product. Uh, it talks about continuous delivery. It talks about how you should do sustainable development. And all the things that we know works, uh, and uh, we should do every day. Uh, and also, you have a lot of books. We have, we know about uh, test-driven development, we know about uh, continuous integration, which should be an industrialized practice by now. Uh, we know about how to make robust software. Uh, we know uh, how to do continuous delivery. That book is also seven years now. Uh, we know about the Phoenix Project, uh, and we know about uh, microservices. And we know about how to do it in a product kind of way, with a lean enterprise. It's not just for startups and for small uh, manufacturing companies. It's also for uh, software de development in the enterprise. And we know how Google does this, right? So we have all this wonderful information about how we should work. It's all being described. We have the recipes. And a lot of information about how other companies are doing this, right? So, three years ago, uh, Amazon said that they were deploying once each second to, to different uh, uh, environments. That's three years ago. Uh, and now they turned their Apollo product to uh, use for us, so we can actually use their deployment pipeline for our projects. Uh, we know that uh, software is eating the world. So now all the five uh, biggest companies in the world by market cap are software companies. So we're taking over the world. And uh, thought leaders in our industry, like uh, uh, Adrian Cockcroft, uh, is a Netflix guy. Uh, he predicts that you should be able to rewrite one of these huge monolith uh, software packages. You know, taking like 50 or 100 people today to rewrite it from scratch in the cloud with serverless uh, technologies in like months. And imagine if that's possible. Imagine how easier, much easier our lives will be if that's possible. Uh, and at least 
uh, you should try, right? Because uh, 10 people for two months, how much does that cost compared to the, the billions of, uh, of uh, kroners that you're using for IT anyway? Uh, uh, Simon Wardley, uh, Hannah referred to his uh, model from invention or custom uh, development to, pr to, to product or to commodity. He, uh, he predicts that uh, serverless will turn our, our industry upside down. It will change the way that we uh, think about and deploy and, uh, and create software. Uh, he's my favorite uh, management consulting, uh, consultant. Uh, he uh, uh, has this uh, uh, value chain mapping uh, tool that actually uh, you can actually analyze how to, uh, how to, how to both predict and change how things are progressing from invention to, to commodity. And last but not least, we have the, uh, the, the numbers. We have the state of the uh, devil's report, which actually is, is, is amazing, right? It says, uh, if you're doing uh, things right, you will not get like double the speed or uh, double the quality. It will be many, many, many times better than you do today in a classical kind of way, right? Uh, so, uh, the evidence and the literature and the blogs and everything uh, is available for us. Uh, we, should be, uh, we should be able to just do this, right? So, are we okay? Are we doing this? Well, it turns out that if you, if you look at, uh, at the, physical, the laws of physics, right? Uh, evidence shows that uh, there must be uh, a multiverse. The universe is not, uh, it doesn't exist, it's a multiverse. There are parallel uh, realities, uh, but they find it hard to prove it because it's, uh, it's hard to, uh, with laws of physics that we know today to prove that, that there's, a, there's a multiverse. But probably it is, most probably. And I have found the proof that uh, it actually is a multiverse. So here, here it goes. Uh, while we were doing internet things, uh, the web services guys were doing this. Uh, the uh, web service standards and the service-oriented architecture like, we have the internet, we know it works. Now, let's do this instead, right? So we have this, uh, uh, this wonderful uh, WS Death Star uh, kind of standards that uh, enterprises were using for, uh, in, in the 2000s. Uh, and you have the uh, ITIL stuff, right? Which is, uh, uh, is uh, humongous. A lot of, lot of practices, a lot of uh, things you have to do. And uh, uh, we can actually prove that uh, ITIL is evil, right? Because ITIL is the time, uh, time uh, money, it regulates how we actually deliver software. And, uh, uh, and time is money, right? You know that. And, uh, and uh, the root of all evil is, uh, uh, is money, so ITIL is evil. So now it's proven, right? Okay, take that back to your ITIL people. Um, you also have uh, the methodologies like Scrum, and Scrum is uh, is okay, right? It, it's uh, just a way to, to to describe how you work and how to get some help, how to do your iterations and your stand-ups and and everything. But the problem with Scrum is that uh, it's an excuse for not doing it correctly. Uh, people say that we will adapt Scrum, uh, and we're done, and they work in the same way. It's just like a phased waterfall uh, methodology. Uh, and you also have an industry certifying people uh, in, as Scrum Masters and Scrum product owners. They earn a lot of money, but it doesn't help the industry. A lot of my uh, experience shows that our customers are not agile because they adopt Scrum, right? And the main problem with Scrum uh, is that it uh, uh, measures the wrong thing. It measures time, effort, uh, to reach your deadlines. It doesn't... Uh, improve your software delivery ability. And it doesn't get better to scale it, like this is uh, uh, how you scale Agile. Uh, this is wrong, so we scale it times 10, and it's 10 times more wrong, right? Uh, and if you call it less, it doesn't make it better, because that's also wrong. And everything is Agile, is agile right? You, all, you, all, you got this Prince, uh, Prince 2 stuff, and you have, okay, we both on the Agile stuff, and we're good, right? So, uh, the agile things are getting uh, some agile. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Uh, and you got this uh, plan, build, run uh, thing going on in many enterprises. 
like somebody should plan it, and somebody should build it, and someone should run it. A lot of uh, miscommunication going on there. Uh, and you got the Norwegian uh, uh, department, which uh, tells the public sector how to work, DFI, which uh, says that, okay, you got to plan something. And in the middle, you can, you can do some iterations, and then you have this uh, phases at the end. And uh, this is how the Norwegian public sector is supposed to work, right? And this could be done right, but it isn't. It, it's uh, interpreted in a way that makes this uh, plan build run, uh, waterfall, the wrong way of thinking. Uh, and Gartner uh, has blessed us with the bimodel uh, framework. So something uh, should be slow, hard to change, uh, just uh, leave it there. And something should be agile, fast. And the problem with, the, with this model is that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work at all, because the world is, uh, is uh, much more nuanced. It's not like something is slow and something is fast. It's a lot of in between here. Uh, and, and also, uh, the uh, agile things are dependent on the uh, slow things. So if you have a, a master record here, which you use in your fast, uh, agile front end, and you need some changes here, you will probably need some changes back here as well. So if you have a slow system, you slow down your whole operation. And also, it says that you can't be agile with this, uh, with this uh, old system, right? That's also false. It's totally possible to be agile with any system. It just depends on uh, your will, your uh, technology, and your people. So, uh, if you ask the old mainframe people, uh, they're actually very, very agile, usually. Like 20 or 25 or 30 years ago, they were doing agile on the mainframe. But today, they are restricted by methodologies and their, uh, all other uh, uh, barriers to actually doing things right. So, the, the bimodal uh, uh, thing, you should also just uh, get rid of. And this is an article which is only a few weeks old from the Norwegian uh, DG uh, site. Uh, it's a Norwegian uh, uh, electric power metering system, which is, powering, uh, should, is going to meter all the households in Norway uh, continuously. And it's a, it's a big project, gathering, collecting all this data. Uh, and uh, uh, they're done programming but there are errors during tests. And also, there are performance problems, right? And like uh, 2003 just called and wanted their excuses back, right? <laughs> <laughs> because you, 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 can't, you can't communicate like this uh, today. It's not possible to say that this is actually happening. Uh, and also in my LinkedIn feed, I get this kind of uh, 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 articles which says that, well, Agile may work for the small, uh, not important stuff, but for large enterprise stuff, it, it, it doesn't work, right? Uh, uh, and this, is common, this article has like 15,000 likes. So th there's, a, there's, a, there's a parallel world out there which actually doesn't understand DevOps, doesn't understand Agile, doesn't understand how to do continuous delivery. They actually uh, believe that the old waterfall uh, or planned uh, centralized method of working is, is, is the right one. Uh, so, what's the problem? How come, how come people don't understand uh, what we're doing, right? So the first thing is, uh, am I wrong? Because every sane, rational uh, uh, human should ask himself, if, if I understand this correctly, and uh, I can't communicate it, I can't uh, convince anybody to do this, is, uh, is the problem with me? Am I not understanding something? And that could be. But I've tried, uh, real, uh, honestly, to, to find uh, to find any flaws in my, uh, in my thinking. And I think it's hard for me to, to realize how that can be wrong. When you see that when you are deploying continuously, you get the feedback loop going, you get the, the end users talking to you, and you get the kind of flow that 
increases uh, the, the throughput many, manifold, it's hard to understand how you can be wrong. Uh, but I think there are uh, some things that we should realize uh, in, the, in the DevOps and Agile community. It's so like uh, I was talking about the Agile Manifesto. Uh, it was uh, written uh, by a, a couple of, or a gang of, um, of tech people. Uh, and it talks brilliantly to tech people, right? Uh, so we should realize that Agile uh, uh, communicates well to us, but it doesn't communicate well to people who doesn't work in IT. Uh, they can read it and they can kind of understand what it's saying, but they don't understand the impact of the Agile Manifesto. So we should stop talking about Agile and the Manifesto to people outside our community. Uh, and also, I think we need to, to uh, realize that software is different. You know, the, you're comparing software to building houses or ships or rockets. It's, it's not like that. Software is different in many ways, right? It really is. Because it's, it's mallable. You can change it. You can uh, uh, decide later if you want to move it to another place. It, it's not tangible. You can't touch it, right? It's just some, a model, uh, some bytes which is running on a computer. It's, it's hard to see how it actually works. Uh, and it's never done because uh, once you, you never understand what you really need until you see it, and then you have to uh, continuously evolve it to, to fit your needs, right? So it's, it's, it's never ending, it just, it just keeps going. It's not like uh, this house that you built and you sell it and it's done, right? Or you have to some, some maintenance to make the plumbing work, right? But that you're done. The software is totally different. You have like maybe two or three or five or ten years to, to maintain it and to, to fit it into your needs. Uh, so it, it, software is, is, is different. I mean, you need to stop talking about uh, software being uh, the same as building houses. I think a good analogy is that uh, um, the, the build step of software is like compiling. It's, it's, it's essentially free, right? Just pull the button and it's it compiled from source code to, to binaries. So, so building in software is free, but programming, it's, uh, it's continuously continuous, continuous designing. It's, it's, it's art. So it's, it's cre cre creative work uh, all the way, right? Um, and I was talking about Scrum and all the other uh, frameworks for doing, uh, doing Agile. Uh, Agile is not a method methodology. It's a culture. And you need to build it bottom up. You need to make people uh, understand, to make them see, to make them uh, experience how this works. It's not enough to, uh, to teach them Scrum or any other uh, framework to make people uh, agile. It's, it's, it's culture. You need to uh, address the human uh, side of it, like how you communicate, uh, how you uh, uh, get feedback, uh, how you improve. And that's, that's culture. That's not the mythology. Uh, Mike Long was talking about uh, science uh, yesterday. And I'm really hopeful uh, about that science is on the kind of tipping point, that now we have enough uh, data to prove that now it will, uh, it will kind of uh, improve from now on. Uh, that we have enough uh, science and data and that we can actually uh, deliver on this promise. I'm also kind of uh, um, skeptical because there are a lot of new people in this industry. And it's a lot of people at all, and they're coming new people all the way. And unfortunately, most people don't read books. Uh, most people Google to find information, and uh, the culture of the, of the IT community is to uh, uh, find the solution and move on. Not as much read a book, uh, educate, uh, and, uh, and understand the other things. And I think that's, that's why you know, all these books that we have, telling how to do testing, to continuous delivery, uh, lean, whatnot, I think uh, it's not read enough. I think uh, we need to read more. And I think that uh, we need to communicate, communicate better uh, how this actually works. And maybe, uh, maybe the science will uh, help us here and give us a good push. But I think we need to do more. 
I think it's also part of the culture and a bit of, a bit of religion. Uh, so we, as a uh, community, as an industry, we need to step up our game. We need to think differently about how we uh, do IT and how we communicate to the rest of the world. So for the DevOps community, for you people, and for me, uh, DevOps is uh, excellent uh, for communicating uh, how we should cooperate, devs, ops, testers, uh, and all, all other competencies. Um, and it's done wonders for uh, our industry uh, for almost 10 years. But I think we should stop talking about DevOps outside our community as well. I don't think it makes sense for other people to uh, understand why we need to uh, improve our uh, working, how, how, we, how we cooperate. You know, the business people, they just see IT as uh, a burden as uh, something that stands in the way for doing, uh, uh, doing that thing. And a lot of uh, business people say that uh, I would really like to do this, but IT stands in my way, right? And then we can say, well, we're trying to cooperate with devs and ops here, so it will be better. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? So uh, as a community, we should uh, continue working with DevOps and continue to deliver, deliver and Agile and XP and all the other things in our community. But outside our community, we should, uh, you should uh, find different ways to express uh, how, we, uh, uh, how we communicate and how we actually uh, convince people to work in the right way, right? So software development. Software, uh, it's code. Uh, it's something that we produce, right? That's, that's our vehicle of uh, delivering value to someone. Uh, software uh, is also a very narrow Thing for people. They don't understand what software is, right? They just do, use an app on the phone or they have to use some kind of workflow uh, uh, application on their computer to do a job. And uh, they curse it because it never works, right? That's software. So we need to uh, speak about product development. Software is uh, something that we uh, know how to, how to create, but we need to talk about product and product development. Uh, so we need this new uh, view on how to make products with autonomous teams that owns their products from uh, they are uh, created until they die, right? Like the ability to run it. And the product is the center, not the project, not the software, not the methodology, not the DevOps. It's, it's the product that actually delivers value to our customers. And we need to think about agile not only for product development, we need to talk about agile organizations, if that makes sense. Uh, ING uh, is a bank which has transformed from a traditional way of uh, banking and making banking software. Now they're uh, turning their operation around uh, and are, are uh, organizing in true uh, autonomous teams that uh, owns their part of the product domain and uh, thinks correctly, in my view, that think in, in products and not in the centralized uh, traditional banking way. And they should be more, uh, more uh, or better uh, at uh, uh, handling the changes in the banking industry that most other banks are doing right now. And for us, as a community, <laughs> I was talking to a colleague a couple of years ago, and he was doing uh, one of the most successful continuous delivery operations uh, that I knew of in, in Norway. They were deliver, delivering to prod production every, uh, every hour, if, if they had to. Uh, they had uh, a low speed on, on product development, uh, very few bugs. And if they got bugs, they were able to roll forward or roll back. Uh, and they're doing all the things that I think is important in, in this new uh, product development world. And then the enterprise decided, uh, decided to outsource their operation uh, to India. Uh, so uh, my colleague was, uh, instead of doing this uh, product development with his team, he was, uh, he was kind of a, a great star in this, in this company, right? So he was handpicked to go to India to get people uh, to work on uh, this new software or the, this new way of working. And I asked, I asked him, uh, how old are you? 
he was like uh, uh, almost 40 years old. Uh, and how long are you going to take this? I mean, you know the right way to do this. You know that you do, what you're doing now is wrong. It's not helping your company. Uh, uh, so, again, to you people, we need to step up our game. We shouldn't accept working in the wrong way. We need to uh, find ways uh, to change it. And Sen Inge's talk yesterday was, uh, was very good for finding techniques, for, for, uh, uh, for uh, convincing people to handling people which are standing in your way. Uh, I think that ThoughtWorks is, uh, is uh, uh, on a good way here with their report. That, that the next disruption is uh, uh, courageous executives. They have uh, seen on the customer base and they correlated where things are happening uh, in, in a good uh, product uh, development way and uh, how the executives are acting in, in those enterprises. And the correlation is very strong. Where you have, uh, where you have the, the courageous ex executives that does the right things and communicates in the right way, things are happening, right? Maybe not a surprise, but it, uh, uh, it under underlines that you need, uh, you need the, the executive level to understand uh, how uh, uh, the software uh, uh, or the product, de the product development world is changing. Uh, in uh, NAV, the Norwegian Welfare Department, uh, we have one of those. Uh, Torben Larsen started working there two years ago. And he has turned the operation uh, upside down. Uh, he's uh, from kind of plan, build, run, uh, getting contractors to do the job. They're hiring good people. They're uh, taking responsibility for the, their product development. And they're uh, organizing in, in uh, autonomous teams that will own their products. Uh, and it's very, it's very easy to see that one person like this is able to turn the, the, the whole operation around. So we need more of those people, right? More people like Torbjörn. Uh, uh, so who's that leader going to be? Who's able to do that? And that's you guys. You need to do this job. Uh, you don't have to speak to your C-level executive. You need to be one. So. This is a uh, kind of call to action uh, for, uh, I hope, hopefully, next uh, DevOps Oslo next year. Uh, a handful of you will have taken a step up, working towards uh, becoming a C-level executive. So it's time to suit up, or you don't have to, but you have to actually get at the top and start uh, convincing and start changing how things are done from the top level, not only from the bottom up. Thank you.